Okay, boys and girls, today we're gonna to be taking a look at some traditional outdoor winter gear that excites me. Stuff that is fun to use, but also very, very effective. Stuff that is sometimes, or some of it's a little bit new, some of it's a bit old, but we're all gonna be taking, or we're gonna take a look at it all. And as always, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And the other disclaimer before we get into this, not all of this equipment is the easiest to find, nor is it uh, the most accessible. You can't just order some of these pieces and I will make note of that. But that is something to be expected with a lot of awesome and kind of traditional Alaskan equipment or winter gear that you can wear. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so as this one totally covers up the entire screen, uh, it's very hard to see, but this is my traditional Alaskan parka. And this is a very old parka. I did not get it new, but I did get it. And I've had this thing for, I think about 10 years now. And it is a very old, very big, but very effective goose down parka. And this one doesn't see a whole lot of screen time on the channel just because it is so warm that I only break it out at around negative 20 and colder because it is very, very warm warm and so unless I'm going out for a very long time or going out to into a very cold environment I won't generally break this park out but when I do I do it for a good purpose and like I said that is because it is very warm and it is very very old school and as you can see definitely looks like it has been worn quite a bit there are some tears uh, down here kind of in that area as you guys can see but it is still 100 usable and very effective and probably my favorite part about this thing the kind of fizz factor for this is the fact that it has a wolverine uh kind of lined hood on it so it is very cool very uh, unique in that regard and also pretty crazy pretty expensive if you were trying to find one of these yourself and so this is one of my favorite pieces of winter apparel like i said i don't usually break it out too much but it is super cool and i do enjoy wearing it when i do wear it that is my goose down parka now unfortunately this one uh, is not something that, like I said, you'll be able to find on the, every street. This is a very old parka, and I don't even actually remember or know who makes it because the tag is well worn off. So it is pretty much impossible to find out who made this, but it is definitely made in Alaska, and it is definitely traditional. So... Okay, so the next one is not as rare or as hard to come by, and that would be my Steger Arctic Mucklucks. Now, these things are definitely a little bit uh, old school looking, and they are definitely newer, as you can see, but they are insanely effective, and I have been in our cold spells wearing them out quite a bit, but when it is cold enough to justify them, they not only look fantastic and look awesome as traditional mucklucks, but they are very comfortable and very warm. So that is the next piece, Steger Mucklucks. And these ones you actually can get. I will have a link in the description below to their website if you want to place an order to get your own made up just for you. Okay, so the next one that is definitely traditional is my Ushanka. Now this one is made for me or was made for me by a awesome person in the village of Galena. So once again, this is not something that you'll probably be able to buy. This isn't something that you can go to the store or there's really no place to order them, but this is a beautiful hat made out of beaver and is once again, super warm, super comfortable. Now I will say this, I was rather opposed to Ushankas or ear hats or this type of style of hat for quite some time, rocking just my kind of beanies that I normally do, but I will say these do make a very big difference if you're looking for something that is super warm and if you're not looking for something that just keeps you comfortable but keeps you toasty out in the cold, these hats are definitely the way to go. And unfortunately, like I said, there's no reliable source that I can recommend any one person, but if you do get the ability or the chance to buy something like this or obtain a hat like this, I would heavily suggest doing it because they are they are a really big game changer and definitely love wearing this one and it definitely at negative 20, negative 30 and definitely at negative 20, negative 30, it makes a huge difference in my comfort and warmth overall. So not only does it look awesome and is it just awesome to have a very comfortable, very soft beaver fur, but it does really do an effective job at keeping me warm, keeping the moisture off of me and once again, staying effective in the wilderness in, in severe cold. So that is the Ushanka 
uh, that this is my traditional Ushanka made it with beaver. So really awesome hat, do love this and expect to see a bit more of this on the channel. Though I will say once again, similar to the previous things we mentioned, this is very warm, just like the mukluks and the parka. So if it is too warm out, you almost really can't wear them because you overheat. So next to that is these last little bits, and these are definitely things that you can buy. And the first one is going to be my wool neck gaiter. And whether it's a face mask or a neck gaiter like this that's made out of wool, these things are so comfy and very, very effective. Now this one is made by Icebreakers or Icebreaker, but really anyone that makes good wool uh, neck gaiters or face masks, you definitely want to check one out and add it to your collection because wool, especially merino wool, is very comfortable and is very resilient. It keeps you warm even when it's frozen over. It is a really big game changer for me and as I'll get into more with wool, uh, definitely really love running this and while it's not quite as traditional looking, it does look green, uh, you can get these in more traditional colors similar to this gray. But uh, either way, wool is definitely a traditional material and is very effective, very comfortable, and something that I totally would recommend. Uh, previously to this, I was running like polyester kind of base layers and face masks and stuff. And while they're not bad or super ineffective, wool is definitely more effective, especially when it gets wet or when it gets uh, moist. In when you are dealing with extreme colds like negative 20, negative 30, when you breathe out, especially because this is a face mask that's covering your mouth, you know, when you breathe out and your face mask starts to get wet, starts to get cold. Whereas these guys, when it gets wet, it still retains its comfort and its warmth. So big difference in that regard. Would highly recommend running wool uh, face masks or neck gaiters like this. Okay, so like I said in the previous uh, point, this is also a wool base layer. Now I have top layers and bottom layers. This is just one I had laying around. This is one of my bottom layers and this one was made by 365 Merino. Uh, I had, did a video on this company. I think they're really great, certainly next to the level of quality that my uh, neck gaiter and other things that I have made from other companies that are more well known. Uh, are but wool is definitely a huge thing now i'm kind of surprising myself that i didn't really get into wool base layers sooner like i said i was running a lot of synthetic materials for base layers previously but i think that wool is definitely the way to go not only because it is far more comfortable and especially if you have base layers that are synthetic and you wear them you know back to back with something that's wool you'll notice that it feels like you're wearing plastic when you're wearing synthetic but when you are wearing these wool base layers they are such a game changer and initially i was wearing these base layers every day to test their quality but now i just wear them every day because they are super comfortable and whether you're inside or outside so long as you're properly dressed uh, they really do a great job at helping regulate your temperature and so you can wear these base layers inside without overheating and of course you know dressing appropriately outside you can wear them and they really do help keep your uh, core temperature uh, maintained or stabilized and they do a very good job with breathability so you can get comfortably warm without just sweating out these base layers and even if you do sweat a little bit the the wool does of course retain its ability to keep you warm now of course you don't want to sweat too much when you're outside in extreme cold but i will say like i said these wool base layers do a really really good job at regulating your temperature so whether you're coming inside from the cold or you're going outside into the cold so i would heavily recommend checking out wool uh, ever since i did uh last part or later part of last year i've kind of just been on a kick and i'm like i'm replacing so many of my base Base layers and so many different things with wool because it is so much more effective so much more comfortable and really just fantastic material so i can't recommend wool base layers more than that uh, of course these are traditional they're not synthetic you know polyesters or nylons or something so they are in this traditional winter gear that i absolutely love so while they may not look as traditional as say a beaver hat um, they definitely are traditional material but either way you slice it this is some traditional gear that makes me excited not just because it looks awesome and it feels super cozy or super comfortable but this stuff all really does work and 
and you know a lot of there's a lot of push to high speed low drag kind of synthetics like Gore-Tex, polyesters, nylons, ripstop materials, but a lot of good things can be said about having true traditional leather uh, material, fur material, wool material. Uh, these materials, while they aren't the lightest, are not really that heavy and for the way that they work and how resistant they are to the world, especially things like beaver that is very water resistant. Of course, wool still is very effective when it gets wet, um, you know, still retains heat even when it's wet. Uh, these materials do have a lot of redeeming qualities. So while, you know, leather is not the lightest material out there, it does have a lot of effective and it has a lot of effective properties that kind of overweigh or outweigh uh, those types of uh, pros that you get from synthetic or new materials, especially when you consider things like durability, water resistance, and uh, especially when you consider properties like durability of leather and water resistance of things like guard hairs and wool. So anyways, guys, that is all I have to say about my traditional winter gear that excites me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully this helps you guys when going to acquire winter gear. Once again, it's not all easy to buy, but if you do find stuff like this, definitely recommend it. So as always, guys, God bless and I'm out.